So today we're going to go over how we make soil blocks here on the farm. We grow thousands of seedlings every year to transplant out into the fields and we have been transitioning from going using plastic pots to using soil blocks for a couple of different reasons. One is that the plastic pots don't biodegrade at all um, and what we find is that even no matter how hard we try to pick every single pot up we always end up with a few that just whirlwind around the property for the rest of the season. And we found that the soil blocks also help the transplants to establish themselves once we get them into the field better than coming out of the plastic pots. So I'm going to go over kind of how we do it and show you how the soil blocker actually works. Starting with this soil, it's very important, obviously, when you're making a soil block to have good soil. You can read up on this and find, I'm sure, countless numbers of recipes for how to make the proper soil blocking soil mixture. But what we found has worked for us is a mixture of a standard potting soil that we buy bulk from a local supplier, peat moss and perlite. And the general proportions are three to one to one. They suggest you use more peat moss than potting soil. I use probably more potting soil than peat moss, but it's something that you can play with and you find what you like and what works for you. The next step after we've mixed our soil is to add water to it. This is way too dry to make a soil block out of. So I'm gonna start, I like to start by making kind of a big pit in the middle, kind of a well, and then I'm gonna add the water. You're going to end up using a lot more water than you think you need to. And then you're gonna even need more than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start wetting it down and mixing it up and try to get to the consistency that I want. So I've mixed kind of everything, all the first round of water in, and it's still way too dry. So I'm going to go ahead and wet this down again and continue to mix it. So I am to a point where I like the consistency of this soil. It's very, very wet. You can see if I grab a handful, it kind of sticks to itself and forms a ball. That's what you want because we're going to be putting into this mold and the whole goal is to smash them down in there so they're really really tight so that when I go to put them into my flat they stay as one solid block instead of crumbling apart. So we're ready to start making our blocks now and this will take you a couple of times you know upwards of I don't know thousands to try to figure out exactly the best way for you to do this but what I like to do is I like to make a big kind of mound of soil and then smash the, the blocker in there. Sometimes I find that it does help if I use the heel of my other hand to just tighten it down. And what I'm looking for is when I smash it down, I can see some liquid coming out of the top. So I know I've got it nice and full. And I take it over to my flat, set it in. It has this handy dandy release lever. And there are our first soil blocks. So that took about two minutes to get that flat done from start to finish. It's 63 cells because this is a, I think this is a one and three quarter inch uh, size soil blocker. So the 63 in here, I use these mostly to transplant into. So I don't use the preset dibble. I actually use my fingers and make the holes just a little bit bigger so that I can make sure that my seedlings will sit in there nicely and have enough room for their roots. A couple of little hints about making the soil blocks. One, you notice I'm wearing blue nitrile gloves. It has a little peat moss and the soil have little teeny tiny splinters in them. And if you do it without gloves on, end up with teeny tiny splinters. And I found that if I do it with my work gloves on, I just get a whole bunch of teeny tiny splinters in my work gloves and then I have them forever. So. I would highly recommend it, but to each their own if it doesn't feel right to you. And then also if you end up making soil blocks and they start to get sticky <laughs> or it doesn't come out right, 
make sure that you have a bucket of water close by and you can just rinse out the soil blocker. That'll help to keep your soil blocks consistent. We start most of our seedlings under lights and then when they get to this point, we like to move them straight into soil blocks and bring them out into the greenhouse. So it's as simple as getting a good tool, popping them out, find that hole. The nice thing about the soil block is that it allows the roots to grow all the way through it. So we get a lot of really great, healthy root growth instead of being inhibited by all those little plastic walls that would stop them and then start them to get root bounds. These guys will continue to grow even into each other's blocks. And I have a couple of flats in the other greenhouse that I'm gonna show you that on just so you can get a feel for what the root systems look like. So there it is, that's a finished flat of 63 little tiny celosias that are going to be heading into the greenhouse here in another month or so getting ready for the spring flower season. So we're now in our growing on greenhouse and these are some soil blocks that I planted maybe a month ago. Uh, they're ready to go in the field. These are some ornamental grasses and just pulling them apart you can see the root systems are amazing on them. They are super healthy. Um, they come apart really easily for the most part. Every once in a while you'll get one or two that really give you a hard time, but they come apart. I was shocked the first time I did this and saw how perfectly that little square was. Um, I was expecting them to be really root bound into each other and they just tear apart really easily and then you just take this and that guy goes straight into the field. And that's how we make soil blocks. So the three primary soil blockers we use are the 12 stand up, the 20 cell hand, and then the four blocker, which is the one I use today. It's also the one I use the most. We got them all online from Johnny's Seeds, which is a great resource, so you should check them out. Anyway, thanks for swinging by the farm, and we'll see you next time.